Hi, everybody. My name is Lee Daniel, and I'm a practicing lawyer who's been practicing in the area of domestic relations for the last almost 25 years. During the course of that time, the landscape regarding custody has changed quite a bit. When I first started practicing law, it was almost a foregone conclusion that the mother was going to receive primary custody, especially if there were young children involved. But that's just not the case anymore. Now, both mothers and fathers receive primary custody, and there also is that option of joint physical custody, which the courts must consider. I have another video on the different kinds of custody, but in this one, I really want to talk to you about primary custody and when are some times when it's when you should go for primary custody or when you have a good chance of getting primary custody. If you're the person who has been caring for the child and you are their primary caregiver and it's not just because the other party is gone to work, then you have a pretty good chance of getting custody. And let me tell you what I mean. If you're the only one that goes to the doctor's appointments or the school functions or the ball games or is involved in the child's life in a significant way, then the court's gonna look at you probably more favorably to give you primary custody. But if that other person is only gone because they're working, the court obviously understands that somebody has to work and that the family needs money to pay for the children's needs. But if that other parent is just not interested in parenting, then that's an opportunity um, for you to tell the court that you would be the better parent to have primary custody of the child. Some other times that primary custody would be appropriate is if the other parent has got substance abuse problems. Um, court is not going to want to give joint custody or primary custody to a parent who has problems with either alcohol abuse or drug abuse. Now, obviously you have to prove these things and some ways to prove it might be um, a drug or alcohol related crime. It might be rehab. It might be a failed drug test. It could be um, admissions that the party drinks excessively. Could be witnesses talking about the drinking or the drug use. And so, and, and we can go, that's, that's a much more complicated subject, but that's one of the reasons. Another reason that joint custody would not or might not be appropriate is if there's some mental health challenges. If one of the parent has shown that they don't have the capacity to take care of the child because of some mental health issues, then the court is not likely to award joint custody and would give you primary custody. And the mental health issues might be proved by um, perhaps a suicide attempt or suicide ideations or um, they might have been uh, committed or they might have been um, received some treatment for some mental health issues. And I'm not talking about um, depression. There, there are varying degrees in depression and I'm not talking about the fact that they may be uh, taking an antidepressant because they're going through the divorce. You know, I'm talking about depression that is debilitating and perhaps they stay in bed all day. They don't get the, the housework done. They're not able to function. They're not able to take the children places and, and they're not able to effectively parent the children. Another reason that joint custody would not be uh, a good option is if the parents live in a different county. And, and I've seen people attempt it when they live in different counties and there's a long 30, 45 minutes. And I'm not saying it's not possible. It really depends on the parents willing to work the parents' willingness to work together. But the biggest problem that I see is that the children are the ones that have to get up really early to get to school. And, it, and then one parent or the other is gonna have difficulty going to their extracurricular activities and spending time with them. And so that obviously causes a problem with joint physical custody. So at that point, somebody probably needs to be primary. Um, the other piece for, is when there's domestic violence. If there's been domestic violence in the home, then there's a presumption that, um, and that person is proved to have committed the domestic violence, there is a presumption that that person should not receive custody. So the court obviously does not want a child to be around domestic violence. That also relates to when someone is in a new relationship and domestic violence is taking place. I've been involved in many, many cases over the years where we've had to go back to court and get primary custody because domestic violence was happening. 
in the other person's life. And it's very sad. You don't want your children to be privy to that. And you don't, you definitely don't want that. Another thing and another reason why primary custody might be more appropriate is when the children um, are older and they're very closely aligned with one parent and they, they're very clear on the parent they want to live with and they can articulate that to the court. Now, a child's preference is not going to be the determining factor, but if it, it will be a factor, but the child needs to be old enough to be able to, to clearly delineate why they want to live with one parent and they need to be able to speak to the court. And sometimes people come in and say, I want my child to talk because they hate going over to such and such's house and they're five. Well, the court is, is less likely to give that child that's young um, credibility, credence as they would be when it's a child that's a lot older. So if you're looking at a teenager who says, I definitely want to live with my dad because my mom is drunk every night and is living with her boyfriend, there you have it, right? So if you can prove that these kind of things are going on, then it's more appropriate for primary custody than joint custody.